not out there anymore. You're home, here in New York. Oh, yes, Mother. Baby. <laughs> there. I... I can't help it, Mother. Hush, darling. These nightmares. I... I can't take them anymore. It's happened to stronger men than you when a bomb explodes practically at their feet. You know what Dr. Richter said. You'll be well soon. I don't care. Well, here's something you will care about. What is it? A letter from Claire? It's a cable. They telephoned it to me just now. Why doesn't she ever write me? Well, maybe because a, a letter takes four days and a cable only four hours. She doesn't want a regard to go cold en route. Shall I read it to you? If you want to. Dear Steve, getting along famously. Looks as if I'll pass the exams. Keep fingers crossed that you will marry a Bachelor of Art in the spring. Love and kisses, Claire. The spring. But why not now? Maybe it's better that Claire isn't here. Maybe she'd change her mind about the engagement if she saw you now. Oh, you know how fickle girls are. You have no right to talk that way, Mother. Claire is not girls. You've got no right to say those things. I'm sorry, dear. Please forgive me. Oh, your, your pajamas are all wet. I'll get you some fresh ones. Good morning, Mrs. Kennedy. Good morning, Janet. Good morning, Steve. What's the matter? Same old thing. Nightmare. And he wants Miss Morgan. Well, maybe he isn't wrong at that. I really don't understand why she... Come on, Steve. Can't be that bad. Janet. Hmm? What did you do when your fiancé was shot down during the war? I took care of him. Then I was in England. We were stationed at the same base. Is that why you stayed a nurse after you got charged? Why do you say that? Well... Isn't it the Jack you take care of in all your patients? Maybe. In a way. Stevie, you really shouldn't compare yourself to Jack. Why not? Well, because if he lived, he never would have been really well. You think I will be? Of course. Yeah. Janet, you don't think I'm crazy, do you? Oh, nonsense. Well, Mother thinks I am. Oh, Stevie, she does not. Listen, there used to be a telephone in this room. Why did she have it disconnected? And why haven't I been getting any mail? Well, perhaps there isn't any. Yeah, that's what she says. I know that's not true. Well, I've been writing letters myself, and I haven't gotten any answers. My letters weren't mailed. Did you ever tell her that? Well, sure, several times. She says I'm a silly little boy. <laughs> silly little boy. That's what she always says when I, whenever I wanted anything that she didn't want me to have. You don't think I'm silly, do you, Janet? Of course. Otherwise, you wouldn't be lying around in bed all day. She wants me to. That's why she took my clothes away. She did what? Go look in the closet. Said she sent them to the cleaners. <laughs> Did you ever hear of a cleaner who needed a monk? Steve, is that why you always said no when I suggested going for a ride? One of the reasons, I suppose. I had not been treated like a child. It's worse having to admit it. What's the other reason? Well, I. I just don't care anymore. I would if, if Claire were only here. Eat your breakfast. Come in. 
May I speak with you for a moment, Miss Kennedy? Why, of course, Janet. Thank you. Come in now. Make yourself comfortable. Well, what was it you wanted to speak to me about? Miss Kennedy, I, I'd like to ask you a question which might sound, well, a bit personal for an employee. <laughs> Why, of course, dear. After all, you've been with us for nearly a month and you're practically one of the family. What kind of girl is Claire Morgan? Beautiful, lovely, excellent family. Just the right wife for my son. Well, I knew of Steve's engagement, of course, but until today I didn't know how much she meant to him. I, I hadn't seen him cry for her. If Dr. Richter agrees, I'm going to have Miss Morgan come to New York right away. And just why, may I ask? Well, she's the one to look after Steve. The only one who can really help him now. Oh, that's impossible. Why impossible? But Claire is no nurse. Well, every woman has to be with if, if, the, if the occasion arises. It's part of being a woman. You don't know Claire Morgan. After all, there are other men who would be happy to marry her. She remembers Steve at his best, when he was charming, handsome, gay. We can't take the chance of letting her see him now. It might jeopardize their engagement. And we can't take that chance. If what you say is true about Miss Morgan, and I hope it isn't, she's the wrong wife for Steve or for any other man. You're insulting my future daughter-in-law. Aren't you the one who's insulting her? I? You're judging her by yourself. Not every woman is as self-righteous and domineering as you. Miss Dean. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kennedy. All I want is for Steve to get well. That's what I want. I'm doing everything I can. There's such a thing as doing too much. What do you mean by that? Your rush trip to California when Steve came back from Korea. The doctors wanted him to stay in the hospital. But you mobilized the whole of Washington to get him discharged and back here in your care. I did what I thought was best for my son. Please let Miss Morgan come here. No. Very well. Nurses are scarce. There are many patients who need me much more than the boy of a mother who prefers her own power to his welfare. I'll ask Dr. Richter for permission to leave. Right away? No. I'll stay till the end of the week. For Steve's sake. That will give you time enough to find another nurse. address in Paris, please. This is Miss Morgan. Claire Morgan? Well, when did you get back? I thought... Six weeks ago. Miss Morgan, you don't know me. My name is Janet Dean. I'm a nurse. I'd like to talk to you. No, it's... It's very important. It can hardly be done on the telephone. All right, Miss Morgan. Thank you. Quarter to six. Yes. Goodbye. Excuse me for a moment, please. <clears throat> Doctor Richter speaking. Oh, hello, Janet. She, she's in town? Well, of course. Go see her. But keep your eyes open. 
Well, you'll have to improvise. A nurse sometimes has to be like a good actress who goes along without a part. Oh, I know I can depend on you, Janet. That's all. Now, uh, Mrs. Osborne, as I was saying... Please excuse me for keeping you waiting, Miss Dean. It's all right, Miss Morgan. My name's Claire. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Just six o'clock. Time for cocktail. What will you have? <laughs> Did I say anything funny? You think that everybody starts to drink at six o'clock? People I know do. Martini? Yes, fine. Unfortunately, I don't have too much time. I have a cocktail party. I came to talk to you about Steve Kennedy. Steve? Are you from Korea? This morning? From Korea? Well, that's where he is, isn't it? Well, of course. Do you have the cable? No, his mother phoned it to me. Heaven knows why lately. He, he always cables her instead of me. Why well, he never writes. Anyway, he's fine, and, and he'll be back in the spring. Oh, here I am, jabbering about him instead of listening to you. I dare say you saw him only a few days ago. Thank you. Yes, only a few days ago. To Steve. To Steve. He asked me to tell you that he misses you. And he hopes you miss him as much. Of course I do. Please excuse me, I, I have to reconstruct my face. Somebody is, somebody is picking me up at 6.30. Tell me more about Steve. Well, I... I think he's a little afraid. Isn't every soldier? He's afraid of you. You're joking. Why? You know, it's a long time before spring. Anything could happen. He could be wounded or worse. I think he wonders how you'd feel if... If what? Sometimes I go to the Veterans Hospital over in Brooklyn. Why don't you come with me? To a hospital? Why should I? Well, there's nothing the fellows like to see more than a pretty girl. See, they occasionally feel a little bit neglected and bitter. Far too few people come to see them, especially people like you. But I'm not an entertainer. What would I do in a hospital? Just be there. All right. Sometime next week, perhaps. No, Claire. Tomorrow. That's impossible. I have a cocktail party tomorrow, too, in fact. Cancel them. Really? Why? For Steve's sake? Now, if I was inclined to be jealous, I might get ideas. Just the way you pronounce his name. Well, he is nice, isn't he? Say, hmm. you're in love with him, aren't you? I shall stand on my constitutional rights and refuse to answer. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> I'll pick you up tomorrow. At three, all right? Make it four. I hate to bolt my breakfast. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Lovely, beautiful, excellent family. Mrs. Kennedy was right about Claire Morgan. And beyond that? I don't know, Doctor. I have an idea there's something beneath the glamorous surface. How deep it goes, I'll know tomorrow. I hope. You know, it was an excellent idea to invite her to the hospital. It'd be like watching a soldier during live ammunition drill. Find out more about him than you would after a year's observation. You know, Janet? This is the critical time for Steve. In the hospital, now they'd be giving him shock treatment. His mother's against it. And as he's in her custody, unfortunately, she has a right to refuse it. That's out of my hands. Doctor, if Steve met his fiance unexpectedly, wouldn't that be shock therapy of a sort? Yeah. A psychological shock? Yes, but there's such a thing as too big a shock. If you employ insulin, you know just exactly how much to give the patient. But psychology? That can't be measured. And I'd hate to think what could happen if she walked out on Steve after the meeting. Well, can't leave him in his mother's care much longer. She'd drive a normal person insane. Unfortunately, that's true. But there's nothing we can do about her. Just have to wait and see. You see, Janet, whatever we do, we take a risk. Will you call me from the hospital? Yeah. Hmm. Well, keep your fingers crossed.
Hello, Jack. Hi, thanks for the book, Janet. You're welcome. Well, Ray, what are you doing writing a letter to your senator? No, I'm composing a love letter for my friend here. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'd like for you to meet a friend of mine, Claire Morgan. Hello, Claire. Nice well, that mustache did grow a little bit, didn't it? Oh, that's coming along fine. Thanks. How about a date tonight? Late one or early one? I'll take the swing shift. <laughs> sure. What's that going to be, Marty? Oh, it could be a sweater for you, if you let me try it on you first. <laughs> Why not? Like it? It's fine. <laughs> that just goes to show you don't know much about it. I know a little. I, I'm taking art lessons myself. You do? Then maybe you can show me how to draw a clown. I'll try. What's your name? Frank. Frank Dunn. See? Now, now you go on, Frank. No, not that way. You're, you're pressing too hard. Is that better? No, it's still too hard. Now hold the crayon looser. Sideways, see? Leave my hand. That'll show me. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked you. But why? As if this was a hand. Come on, Frank. Let me show you. Loose and, and light. Like this, do you see? Yeah, thanks. Excuse me, Madam Murray. Uh, Dr. Richter speaking. Oh, hello, Janet. What's the verdict? I believe we can risk it. Do you uh, think you could get him out of the house? Perhaps. Maybe I could get him out in the car. If Mrs. Kennedy is away from the house. Listen, what shall I do about his clothes? Oh, I don't think his mother destroyed them. They must be around somewhere. Uh, i tell you what. You make a date with Claire Morgan someplace, some quiet place, uh, where there are not too many people. Yes, ma'am. Where's Steve? Well, they went out when you were gone, Mrs. Kennedy. They? Uh, he and Miss Dean. You better have Charles bring the car around right away. Hello, Estelle. Uh, this is Mrs. Kennedy. May I speak to Miss Morgan, please? She did. Where did she go? Do you know? Oh, it's very important, Estelle. Will, will you please look in her engagement book? Layton? She had an appointment with Miss Dean. Thank you. An appointment with Miss Dean? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for someone, thank you. This way, Mrs. Kennedy. You're hurting my arm, Dr. Victor. Am I? You'll have to answer for this, Dr. Victor. If I do, I'll say I've been defending a boy who was unable to fight for himself against a mother's criminal attempt to prevent him from becoming a man. I'll say more than his life was at stake, his sanity. That's a lie. I might even go into the background of this case. Now, you ruined your own marriage, and you're resentful of anyone who is happier than yourself. You think you acted to protect Steve's engagement. What you don't know is, 
that you really don't want your son to get married at all. Claire! From Paris. From Paris? Oh, why, oh, I've been back over a month. A month? You didn't come to see me? You didn't even telephone? But, but you're supposed to be in Korea. Korea? Oh, I was brought home from there months ago, sick. I'm, I'm still sick. Sometimes I'm, I'm not myself. You see? Before, if anyone had said I'd be crying over nothing, we'd have laughed at them. Well, why didn't you say it, Claire? Say what? That I'm not the man you wanted to marry. Go on, say it. He. He. What makes you say that? You didn't want me to know you were home, did you? You wanted me to think you were still in Paris, didn't you? I want you to think that I'm still in Paris. You sent me those cables, didn't you? Cables? What cables? What cables? Yours. At least your name was on... Now, wait a minute. Do you happen to have one of those cables on you now? No, they, they... They came over the phone. My mother took them down. Steve, was it your mother who also suggested that I mightn't want you the way you are? Well, that's only natural, isn't it? After all, I'm not the same as Stop I was. Stop it, Steve! There's nothing the matter with you. You've got two hands, haven't you? Two legs, a head on your shoulders. The only trouble with you is that you won't use that stupid head of yours except to cry your eyes out and think that nobody cares about you. But I do, you idiots. Now more than ever. That's the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters. Hey, let's have some service around here, waiter. Bring a martini for my girl and, and, and a scotch and soda for me. End of case, doctor? Almost, Janet. Almost. Almost.